Hey Internet, this is Jacob Clifford. Now it's time to practice Lone Wolf Funds. It's one of the key graphs you have to know in an introductory macroeconomics class. So here we go. As always, let me do a quick revision or review to get it back in your brain again. This is the loanable funds market. Remember, the demand curve is downward sloping and it's based on people's willingness to borrow loanable funds. So when the interest rate is really high, people don't wanna borrow very much, so the quantity demanded of loans is very low, but when the interest rate's really low, then people wanna borrow more. So a downward sloping demand curve. And the key here is to remember, who is demanding loanable funds? Well, it's not banks, it's not financial institutions. This is individuals like you and me taking out individual loans or businesses taking out business loans. So this is borrowers also investors or investment. And of course, there's a supply curve which is upward sloping. When the real interest rate is really low, the quantity of loans is gonna be very low. I'm not gonna wanna lend out very much money, but when the real interest rate goes higher, then I definitely wanna lend out more money, and so more people are gonna lend out more money, so there's more loans available, so the quantity supplied goes up. This is lenders, but it's also savers, right? When you put money in the bank, when you're saving money, that now has more loanable funds available to be lent out. So remember, savers, savers is the supply. And of course, the supply and demand come together at equilibrium and establish the real interest rate. Now, if you're asking yourself, well, why is it real but not nominal? I made another video about that. So go watch that video that explains the whole thing and it connects it to the money market graph. Okay, okay, so you have the graph down. Now it is time to practice. Now, in other videos, like for aggregate demand supply or consumer price index or bank balance sheets, all those examples I gave you were like kind of practice examples that I came up with. This time, I'm going straight to AP macro exam. So all five of the examples were all asked on the AP macro exam. It's time for you to figure it out. Here's what we're gonna do. For each one of these, I want you to take out a piece of paper and draw the graph for the loanable funds market and show the shift that occurs, showing if it's demand or supply, what happens to the real interest rate and the quantity of loans. For right now, pause the video, try that, then I'll go over the answers to all of them, okay? Good luck. Okay, how did you do? Did you do well? I hope so, here we go. The first one was on the 2014 uh, macro free response and it's talking about when there's deficit spending and there's an increase in government spending. So it turns out there are two, yes, two ways to draw this on the graph. It all depends on the certain point of view. A certain point of view? I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on this answer because it's kind of a special case. I promise I won't do that for the other ones. One way to look at it is if there's more borrowing that would increase the demand for loanable funds, right? So individuals are taking out loans and the businesses were taking out loans and now the government's showing up and says, hey, I want to borrow money too. I demand loans and the demand would go up. So that's one way to look at it. Take a look at that quantity of loans. That quantity of loans looks like we're borrowing more but the reality is individuals and businesses are borrowing less. If you look over here at quantity private, that shows you the quantity demanded of private loans would occur now the interest rate is higher. So yes, government deficit spending would increase the demand for loanable funds, but private borrowing would decrease right there to quantity private. So what is that called? When the government deficit spends, increasing interest rates, well, it's crowding out. The point here is if you do an increase in the demand, then you're right, that is correct. But what's also correct is a decrease in supply. The idea here is if the government is doing all the borrowing, that's less funds available for businesses and individuals. So the supply of loanable funds would decrease because the government's doing all the borrowing. And this makes it easier to see the idea of crowding out, right? Now you can actually see there's a decrease in the quantity of loans in the private sector. So for question number one, if you showed an increase in demand, then congratulations, you're right. But if you showed a decrease in supply, then you're also right. Awesome. Okay, for question number two, this is from the 2013 macro fee responses in the AP test. It says if personal savings increases in the United States, what's gonna happen? Well, remember, savings is supply. That means there's gonna be an increase in supply, a decrease in the real interest rate, and the increase in the quantity of loans. Number three was on the 2009 AP exam, and it says assume there's increase in political instability, like a war, or a revolution, something where the economy and uh, the government are falling apart. Investors move their funds out of this country. So foreign investors are taking their money out. Now this is where an econ class gets tricky because the teacher has to ask you very specific questions to get specific answers. If I told you there's political instability, draw loanable funds, what'll happen? Well, there's two different things that could definitely happen. It all depends on who you're looking at. Are you looking at the businesses inside the country who are deciding not to borrow as much because there's political instability? Or are you looking at foreign investors who are putting money into the system? In this case, they told you very specifically, these are foreign investors who are taking their money 
out of the country. So a very specific question, you have to give them a specific answer, and the answer is right here. This is a decrease in the supply of loanable funds. Supply shifts to the left, so the real interest rate goes up and the quantity of loans falls. Take a look at question number four. This is from the 2011 fee response in the AP Macro exam. It says, Japan attracts an increased amount of investment from the European Union. Investment up to this point is always borrowing, right? C, I, G, X, and I is investment. But in this case, they're talking about foreign investment, which is lending, not borrowing, not business spending inside your own country. So an increase in foreign investment would increase the supply of loanable funds in Japan. That'll decrease the real interest rate and increase the quantity of loans. Again, there's more loanable funds available to be supplied because all this foreign money is coming in. The supply of loanable funds depends on individuals inside your own country willing to save or lend out money and individuals from other countries who are willing to lend money in your country. Okay, the last one, question number five, was from the 2018 macro fee response question. It says, the government reduces the tax rate on households' interest earnings. Remember, people have money to go buy goods and services, that's consumption, but they also have money and they can buy assets. They can buy things that will give them future money in the long run. So they might buy real estate, they'll go buy a house, they might buy stocks, so they might buy some sort of bond or some sort of interest bearing asset. And in this case it says, you go buy a bond, you're gonna get a tax break on that interest that you're gonna get paid back. You don't have to pay as much taxes and that'll increase the incentive to go save. So basically this question is just saying there's an increase in savings in this country. And if it just said that, you probably would have had it but because it's slightly worded weird with this reduction in the tax rate on interest earnings, that might've messed you up, but now you know. The point is people will save more, which will increase the supply of loanable funds, which will decrease the real interest rate and increase the quantity of loans. So if you drew that graph, you're correct. Okay, I hope you did well on this practice questions. Let me know how you did, five out of five, four out of five, whatever you did in the comments below, and let me know how else I can help you. If this video helps, or if you need more stuff, let me know. Also, check out my other videos and the Ultimate Review Packet. Thanks for watching, until next time.